ScopeFX is the system for capturing and visualizing field dynamics using NMR field probes. Today in this demonstration, we will show how to visualize previously captured data and demonstrate the functions of the user interface. When you start ScopeFX, you will be prompted to select a project directory. This directory contains one or more data sets which you would like to investigate. This is also where new scans are saved. The ScopeFX user interface is divided into three functional areas. The left column allows for scan selection, planning, the center column displays captured scan data, and right column shows viewing options. For this demonstration, we select a single shot spiral dataset. The acquisition parameters are displayed below the selection panel. Raw field devolution was sampled at 1 MHz for 43 milliseconds. Saved data in this dataset includes the raw probe data, processed phase data, and the case space. The rightmost column allows channel or spherical harmonic selection, the selection of data type to be displayed, and data manipulations. To begin our investigation of the single shot spiral, we select raw magnitude from the data type drop down menu. This displays the amplitude of the free induction decay signal measured by probes. We can visualize all of the probes together in the center window or by selecting one or more probes in the channel selection box, we can visualize the probes of interest. Similarly, the raw phase and complex data can be visualized. Visualizing raw data is helpful when trying to investigate probe behavior or ensuring adequate probe signal. We next select the phase data. This data has had the linear, time-dependent, phase accrual removed. The phase accrual caused by the slice select gradient is readily visualized. We can zoom into the readout portion of the acquisition by using the sample selection slider on the top right of the center column. Case based trajectories can be visualized in three ways in scope FX. Zeroth and first order terms can be displayed, or the complete 16 higher order encoding model, or as parametric data. Selecting the x axis in all samples, we can see the characteristic waveform for a spiral readout. B0 field fluctuations can be seen by selecting the B0 channel. Higher order terms can be visualized by selecting K higher order. Higher order terms are a result of concomitant fields that arise when gradients are activated. We can see the magnitude of each of these fields by selecting various channels. Take a look at the magnitude of the Z2 field. This is the largest concomitant field seen in spiral imaging. The K parametric option shows the measured K space trajectory of the scan. Finally, there is the option to visualize the G strength. We also explore a diffusion data set to show the impact diffusion encoding can have on field evolution during readout. We select the data diffusion weighted EPI, select four dynamics which are used to show four diffusion directions, and we select the K higher order view. The display screen now shows the evolution of the higher order K space parameters. We can scroll through the various higher order parameters and see that the four dynamics have very different responses. For example the ZY and 3Z squared, R square terms. These responses are responsible for the characteristic scale and shear distortions seen in diffusion data.